Very well, we're online. Hey. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first meeting of 2024 of the North Sydney Local Planning Panel. Uh, we, the independent panel, are here today to uh, determine five development applications that have been referred to the panel uh, in accordance with the directions issued by the Minister for the independent panel's consideration. Uh, before we commence, I'd like to say that the panel has had the opportunity of visiting each of the sites and going on, on to those sites and also uh, visiting uh, where requested visitors, uh, not visitors, sorry, objectors' properties. And uh, this afternoon we're here to hear from the uh, applicants and we're here also to hear from objectors. The process will be that we hear from objectors first, and then I ask for the uh, applicants team to respond to some of those concerns that have been made in this public meeting. And then uh, following this public meeting, we then uh, close the, the public meeting and enter a uh, private deliberations session. And the council's uh, website will contain the decisions of this panel, and we usually have them uh, posted by Friday afternoon. So uh, that's just the procedure that we follow. I ask that everybody keep their submissions to some five minutes. And also, I would like to make you all aware that we have read the submissions and we've read the documentation that's been provided to us. And we, like you, have had the opportunity of reading Council's assessment report that has been made public some uh, five days ago. I'll just briefly uh, indicate that um, the panels today, the panel today will introduce themselves and also indicate whether they have any conflict of interest. Uh, I'm Jan Morell and I'm chairing today and I have no conflicts of interest in this matter. Thank you. Linda McClure, I have no conflicts of interest in this matter. Carla Castellanos, and I have no conflicts of interest in this matter. Michael Raymond, and I have no conflict of interest. Thank you very much. So we'll now move on to the agenda before us. And the item number one is 115 Blues Point Road, McMahon's Point. And uh, I have um, applicants' representatives. I have no submitters who wish to address the panel and there were no written submissions in respect of this development application. So I have Felicity King. Are you there? Thank you, Felicity. Uh, Daniel Barber. Hi there. Thank you. And Bruce Smith, the owner. Yes, hello. Thank you. And uh, James Hunt from Finn Abode. Are you here as well? I am indeed. Thank you. Uh, can I see you? Yes, James, I can. Yeah, sorry, let's take the camera. There right. we go. Lovely, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, as I said, the panel inspected the um, both the front and the rear of the premises, and so we understand the context of this particular development application. Uh, can I invite the applicant's team, and I don't know who wishes to lead off. Felicity, do you wish to lead off? No, you're on mute. Yes, you're right now. <laughs> sorry, I was just on mute. Um, I think... Uh... First of all, hello everyone. Um, uh, I think Daniel will sort of lead us off just to have a bit of a discussion about, yeah, the conditions and the DA. Yeah, sure. Um, so firstly, just to mention, like we've worked with council for about nine months with this um, DA. We've had a really good, um, uh, we've made a number of amendments to address their concerns and be working practically with them. Um, we're very supportive of the recommendation for approval and largely con conditions imposed into the DA consent. Um, the, we just would like to request, uh, some minor amendments to the conditions, um, which we think are reasonable requests, um, in mind of the council, of the panel to agree to these changes. Um, the, um, changes I, um, let you make are as follows. There's three of them. Can, can, and so, when you refer us to them, just tell me the number and the page number in the officer's report. Yes. Yes, sure. So the first one I'd like to request is it's uh, condition C18I, which reads the proposed second floor balcony and awning 
are to be reduced in width to match the width of the existing rear wing. Okay, one moment till I find that condition. Page, yeah, sure. page 16. Thank you. Right, I have it now. Thank you. Fantastic. And so probably the best um, document to read um, with that condition from the architectural drawings is the second floor um, floor plan, which is, um, speaking at the page number, So what, what effectively, let me know once you've found this at that uh, the second floor um, floor plan and I'll speak to it. Okay, I'm just, um, just looking for the page number. Yeah, sure. I think it's wrong. It's A113. 13? A113. Okay, thank you. Let me know when everyone's had a chance to um, yeah, ascertain that floor plan. Okay. So it's just there it is. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. So um essentially with this proposal, there's an existing uh balcony that protrudes from the um eastern rear elevation and from the southern side elevation. And effectively this proposal um seeks to demolish that existing balcony. Oh, balcony, the one the one on the side. Yeah, so, so on the second floor level, there's a balcony to the Southern side elevation, also the uh, um, eastern re -elevation, elevation. And it kind of wraps around the building that you yep. probably saw from the re mm -hmm. So what the proposal is seeking to do is we believe to make the proposal uh, less bulky as viewed from that laneway, the actual rear elevation is proposed to be set back. So it's setting back the rear elevation by about a meter and a half. So that rear wall will be set back in. Now, the current proposal proposes a new balcony that's um, that generally aligns, well, it's about 200, 300 mil further than the existing rear balcony. Um, and then it set, sets back from the rear, but then sets back the balcony from the um, uh, side Sullivan elevation. Mm -hmm. um, now, what council's requested, which I understand why, is they want to set back the balcony an additional one and a half meters. So we've already set back the building an additional one and a half. We think it's a better outcome, mm. but effectively, if we're setting back the balcony at one and a half meters more, we're setting it one and a half meters more than the existing balcony location. And so you can imagine from the client's perspective that it kind of prevents the, the, the purpose of seeking approval for a DA if we're getting less than that's already there. So what, we're seeking that currently it's it actually proceeds an additional 200, 200, 300 mil from the existing balcony location. We're happy with a condition to be imposed to say that the, the proposed second floor new balcony must not um, protrude any further than the existing balcony location. So essentially the exactly same location yeah. is existing. So we won't go any further than that location rather than sending it back an additional 1.5 in the site, within the site. Because you understand that you know they wouldn't be proposing a DA today for the upper level if they had to set back the, the whole balcony 1.5 meters further in, mm -hmm. and the building of 1.5 further in when they're already setting it back from the southern boundary as well. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of losing a lot of balcony. So just just the the, the change to that condition of purely to say the rear setback is to produce no further than the existing rear setback line, and we'd be happy with that recommendation. And I think there's also like a value in the um, private open space on that level as well, that we're trying to maintain being off the primary living area for the dwelling. I think um, it's, it's quite important in that regard. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, the total area. private open space is actually less. The balcony area is less than currently. So it's all being mm -hmm. condensed and it's smaller and set more in. Mm -hmm. um, so in balance, it's, a, it's, a, it's less privacy impact. It's a better outcome. But then setting it back in for 1.5, as Felicity is saying, and then only one point, there's a total 1.5 a deep in one location. It just mm. wouldn't meet the needs of the owners of having outdoor dining or off mm. the living area. So that's just a, 
We do think it's reasonable. Maybe setting it back a little bit more, but just aligning with the existing balcony because then you know it, it still makes sense. It makes sense for them to proceed with that upper level balcony. So this is C eighteen Roman numeral one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you? We we were seeking to rather than the the um the proposed second floor balcony being set back a further one point five meters from the rear. We're requesting it to be okay. set back um okay. the same as the existing balcony. Um, yeah, I think it's like, um, so Dan is probably, it's, yeah, so instead of the um, uh, second floor balcony being set back, like what would be about a metre and a half from where the existing balcony is on the south. So you can see on that drawing A113, there's the red dash line of the existing um, balcony. And by pushing it back to, which I think is what the condition is requesting, that it becomes mm. the width of the rear wing, which is um, probably the built form of the rear wing. Um, not the, I think that's what the condition is talking to, that it wants that balcony to be the width of the existing building, um, not the width of the existing balcony, which is actually there. So I sort of interpret that condition to say that that balcony will reduce by about um, one and a half meters off the, it'll reduce, you know, from where the existing balcony is on that corner quite significantly. Um, and we just wanted to raise it as that is quite an important area for the project and for the client to have that private open space. Um, and considering that that balcony is actually there at the moment and that we are, we are pulling back that proposed balcony already from that southern boundary. Um, by about 300 so you can see that that's the difference between the that red dash line that's uh mm. along the southern boundary and, and then, also see where the yeah. stairs proposed that was actually mm. balcony there so we're putting a stair where there was previously balcony so it's we're making it and previously there was privacy impacts from there so we're, that that's part yeah. of the idea is to mitigate those overlooking by putting a, a stair where there's previously a balcony that wrapped around mm. So we feel that we're quite, yeah, by removing that balcony on the side that runs across the side of the existing building and having the stair there exactly, that the privacy is saying they want to keep yeah. 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 But we're happy to have the condition to read that we just, but it is about 200, 300 mil projecting further than the existing balcony. We're just happy the condition to say protrude no further than the existing, to so have it aligned with that same rear. Right. Just, just to ensure we've got clarity on that, I'll just see whether anyone's got a question. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Barber. Just so that I am on understanding um, what your concern is, um, the condition Roman numeral one reads that the proposed second floor balcony and awning are to be reduced in width to match the width of the existing rear wing. So do you understand that what is referred to as the rear wing? Yeah, look, that is something we were well, speaking to the architect before. We weren't um, mm -hmm. 100% clear on that. We we're just checking whether it's the existing wall, solid wall to the north and whether that means it has to be set back an additional 1.5. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think we need to stick to what the condition says, where it says the proposed second floor balcony, which is what is represented, I believe, on page 85 of the report. So that there says second floor balcony and awning. So my reading of this is that the width, the width is to be reduced to match the width of the existing rear wing. Now I Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's what it means. That what I what I understand to that, and I may concur yep. with you that the width of the existing rear wing, and we probably need to seek clarification of this ourselves because yep. that will imply that is the solid wall, as you just put it. Yeah, because that's that's what you know, like ascertain so if it's a solid wall that would be if it's if it's the existing solid wall to the north uh, where that ends and the balcony is being set into that line there that would be problematic that 
effectively it means they're essentially launching a DA to to lose the existing balcony and and then also set back the existing wall elevation a meter and a half. So that would be you can imagine then it'd be problematic for the client to have a worse outcome than the you know than the existing. Whereas what I understand yeah. you wish to have in condition one is that the proposed second floor balcony and awning are to be reduced in line with the existing balcony edge. Yes. Hmm. Okay. I, I now have clarity on that. Now, there was a discussion on Roman numeral two and hmm. these 1.5 meters. Now, I'll, re I'll read these for clarity to everybody. The wall return. Now, can you, um, I don't know if you can share it. Can, your, can you share the screen? Can you share the screen so that you can point out what you understand to be the wall return on the southern elevation? Uh, Would you like to yeah, do it for city? One moment, sorry. Um, yeah, because I think that would be, sorry, we'll just open that up. Um, yeah, because I think that the two, there was really just three conditions that we wanted to touch on. So that was item number one and two. Um, and then just the last, the last item about the corrugated metal roof. Um, so we'll just open up the plan so we can sort of discuss yeah. the yeah. item one and two. Yeah, um, share the screen. Thank you. So if I just, sorry, one moment. I'll just. Okay. Uh, you, you should be able to see just the PDF document. Yes. So if you could kindly point to us what you understand to be the wall return on the southern <laughs> elevation. Yeah, I'll just run through those two items. Sorry, I might just take a moment to load. Um, okay, that is hopefully loaded now. Um, so if we just discuss item number one, which is, and I'll yeah, read it again, the proposed second floor balcony, which is this balcony here, and awning, which is the roof that's over that balcony, are to be reduced in width to match the width of the existing rear wing. Um, so I think it would be good to have a bit of clarification on the existing, which part of the existing wing, um, I guess was the original intention of that condition because uh, that wall there is the existing um, wall width. This line here is the footprint of the existing internal space on the rear wing. Mm -hmm. And this line here, which you can see, I'll just zoom in, sorry, let me just make that a little bit bigger. So you can see here, so this line here is the existing rear wing in the internal footprint. And the line here is the existing um, width of the rear wing balcony. So the current proposal for the DA actually reduces the width of this balcony in a sense to the south. Mm -hmm. So we've pushed, we have already um, pushed back this balcony at the rear 300 mil away from how far out that existing balcony is. Um, so that line there is, is the extent of the existing balcony. And we've already pulled that in about three, 400 away from the southern boundary. Um, as Daniel mentioned, we've already, we've also put the stair um, in the position that comes up through where the existing balcony was located. Um, so we feel that both of those things also help to alleviate any overlooking issues that were present already. Um, and as Daniel mentioned as well, you can see that that dash line is the extent of the existing internal space. So we have actually, reduce the form and the mass, which is noted, I think, in your report as well, um, from that rear elevation. And, you know, to because the, there is a value of having that balcony private open space next to the lounge area. 
Um, so we were just wanting, you know, to seek clarity that the request was to actually then, I guess, indent this this balcony would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. was. That, I, I, yeah, I think the panel's understanding is that exactly as you just pointed out, that uh, line where the existing building is projecting beyond that, correct, that line will, mm. you will match the edge of the balcony all the way out, correct, and take out that extra corner there. That, that corner there. there. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, you're seeking for Roman numeral one to be deleted. Essentially, yes. And yeah, okay. I'm just said rather than you. I'm trying to all these different words. Yes, 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 just as shown. Okay. Right here. Yeah. And what was your next condition? And then the one, the next condition on ice for item two, if I I'll just go back down a level to the first floor. Yeah. Yep. Um, so when you went out past the site, you would have seen the existing rear of the dwelling. Um and we have amended the proposal from the original DA to um, keep that rear wall, that rear brickwork, and um, keep that external form of the building um, and the presentation to the rear laneway. We also, in consultation with a heritage consultant, um, uh, Philip from Weir Phillips, thought it was a good idea to sort of indent this um, new wall from that rear facade to sort of delineate that a little bit as well, sort of the existing form and the new form. And I just wanted to confirm, so the condition two um, reads the wall return on the southern elevation at level one um, is to be reduced to have a minimum 1.5 metre setback from the rear elevation and is to be finished in traditional masonry to match existing. So our um, understanding was that this, so this currently, this wall from this wall, I'll just try to zoom in, sorry. You will not shut out. Yeah, so that's a three, um, 300 setback currently. So the request is to set that back. I think I just wanted to confirm that first of all, that was the request that that's then, that is? That is? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, and we just wanted to, discuss whether it's possible to have this, oh, sorry, I just clicked through to the wrong page. Um, we wanted to see if it's possible to have a one meter setback instead of a 1.5 meter setback as that would you allow you to have sort of two desks in that room in a working from home space and also allow you to um, maintain a bit of window here as well to get the natural light and cross ventilation. Um, and with its sort of location right down the end of the lane where we feel, you know, by just setting that wall back a metre in total rather than the 1.5 noted, that that would um, provide a lot more amenity for the um, for the owners to be able to use this room. Um, yeah, the, and the logic with the, the one metre is that it's a one metre width. So mm. we thought a one metre depth and width would mean that from our understanding from the lane way, it wouldn't be readily discernible that addition. We thought that would be like a, a good compromise number. And and you want to understand uh, to be finished in traditional masonry to match. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um, right. Yes. So that would be yeah traditional. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the only change there you're seeking is one meters instead of one point five. Correct. Yes. Okay. Right. The third condition. Third condition. So the third condition is just relating to item C eighteen, um, V I I I the last one. Yeah. Um, which reads, I'll just read it out, the proposed roof material being clip lock steel roof is to be changed to corrugated metal roof. Um, my understanding is that I can understand and we're um, happy with the corrugated uh, metal roofing for this, like say this portion here, which is over the stairs, um, that is on an angle. So I'll show you that in side elevation. So that sort of is a bit more visible, um, so to speak. Uh, this, uh, actually, this roof here. So we can we were happy to change that to like a, to a corrugated roof metal metal roof. Um, but in regards to the top floor, we selected the clip lock because you're able to achieve a lower pitch um, than the corrugated custom old products. So that allows us to sort of have a more functional roof within that parapet, keeping it below and, and concealed. Um, 
So our request there is just that possibly the condition could be amended to say corrugated metal roof to the um, stair addition. Um, and we could still use the clip lock roofing for the um, roofing within the parapet and over the extension to the rear. Right. And the concern too, if it wasn't the clip lock and it went to aluminium, it would be a five degree pitch. So we'll be mm. actually increasing the height of that roof and it might actually become visible potentially as a result of having that pitch, which would be contrast to what the, the objective of that requirement is. Okay. It, sits, it sits neatly behind the parapet at all points mm. with the clip lock. That's right. From a builder's perspective, it just makes it it makes it far simpler from the point of view of how it actually interrupts the rest of the environment around it. It will be hidden if we uh, if we remain clip locked for that that section of roof. So it's actually requested the condition be broke up to be that the the um, the roof to the above the second floor level to be retained clip lock, and then just the um, first floor or ground level first floor roof to be happy to be aluminium. So you're just you're breaking up that condition. Well, isn't it just a matter of adding the words to the stair addition? Yes, yes. You just or just add, to yeah, it, adding to the stair addition. Trying to keep it simple. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Yes, perfect. Corrugated metal roof to okay. the stair addition. Yep. Thanks. All right then. So is there anything further that you wish to That's add? Currently? Oh just how do I stop share? There we go. Nothing um, further. Nothing further at this point. Thank, thank you, you all. Well, thank you all very much. Um, we will be making a decision and it will be on Council's website by closed business Friday. And thank you for all attending. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number two now. And item number two is 13 Mildred Present Wollstonecraft. Alterations and additions to a dwelling house, including a single story rear addition, first floor addition to existing garage, and alterations to landscaping. We inspected this site today and also went to the adjoining property. So um, we have um, Mark Oxenham, an uh, architect and applicant. Is that correct? Well, Mark and Kieran, who's yeah, the owner? Kieran, yep. Chid, Chid, Chid. And Sean Radford. So representative. And here's I can see Kieran there. We saw him on site today. Hi. Yep. And oh, and I can see Hi. um Mark. Hi, I'm here as well. Yep. And um have we got no you're on for the next matters, are you, um, Brett and Sean? No, I'm on for this I, matter. Yep, you're on for this matter. I yep. haven't got you listed, but um uh oh you're a submitter, yes. So I'm going to hear from you first, Sean. And um you're representing 11A. That's right. Which is um, the, That's pro the... the property yeah. that we went into on site. Sean? Oh, you may have. I wasn't there for the site meeting. So. No, no. Okay. All right, then. Um, so uh, please uh, address the panel. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I guess really I just want to reiterate, we sent some additional uh, material through on um, the 5th, so on Monday. Um, I guess, well, initially the drawings, and this is probably just a simple omission, um, didn't have a uh, RLs for the parapet um, for the lower floor or the garage extension, as it's called in the report. Um, so we've had to extrapolate that from the drawings. Um, we're architects, so we're able to do that. But I guess we would ask that that material be provided because, you know, we're asking people to look at something that doesn't have an RL, absolute RL for the roof. Um, but I guess our main concerns are really just the impact to 11A in terms of the height and how that's been assessed. Um, so I guess sticking with the... Um, the garage extension. Um, so in the report, uh, it mentions that uh, it's required to have a 900 setback because it's considered a first floor ground floor addition. Well, the 900 is a minimum. Um, but the addition does extend beyond the, um, the uh, building envelope 
as a result of this 900 setback. Um, and it does that to a maximum of, well, what we've extrapolated to is 640 mil. Um, and then also the uh, addition has an impact on the solar access to 11A. Um, and it's brought up in the report that this is a non-compliance. Um, so I guess our main issue is, is that this initial non-compliance of being beyond the building envelope because of the 900 setback or the height of the building, either one, um, is having a flow on effect of uh, creating an overshadowing during the um, June that is non-compliant. Now in the report, it also says, well, look, okay, this is non-compliant, but uh, you know, we're achieving um, a positive solar access in the solstice, but that's that's not council's control. So, you know, if if council want to use the solstice as a uh, um, sorry, the equinox um, as the uh, um, control, well, then they should change that. But currently, it's for June twenty one, and it's not compliant. Um, there's other items that we brought up in there about the landscaping. Um, there's landscaping down to the side of this um, garage extension with its current 900 setback uh, to create, I guess, some screening. Um, but in terms of that being viable, I mean, well, we would we would doubt that because I don't know how you're going to access that for continued maintenance, etc. If there's only a 900 is, setback, is this on the southern southern side there? Yes, on yes. the western side, on the western elevation. Western, yeah, western elevation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, sorry, western. Yeah. Yes, sorry, yes, western elevation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where the commuters currently are. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, retaining those during construction, we would see as not being possible. Um, and even if it were, um, then I'm not sure how they're going to be maintained. But um, the main issue is the, the bulk and scale. Um, or the height and the impact it has on solar access. Um, I can, well, I sent through these drawings that we've, um, that we've put our own relative levels on. Um, hopefully they can be provided as part of the DA, but it, well, it was sort of, the, the horse has already bolted in a way because the, um, the report's been written, but without these RLs being provided, which I, I would say is unusual to not have them provided, um, I can share the screen um, as to what we've put on there. They're the same drawings that we sent through on on the fifth. Um, just give me a minute to find them. So we've shaded in, this is the addition here, the, in the magenta is the RLs that we've had to put on there because they weren't provided as part of the drawings, only the blue were. Um, so this is the ultimate parapet height. Um, the ground height next door is 940 below up to 1670 below. That's just the nature of the two sites. So at 11A, we're 940 below at the highest point of the house here so that just has an impact in itself but that can't be helped that's just the way the side is but given that that creates an effective height of 5.58 uh, 5.58 meters um, and this area marked in here is the amount that the it exceeds the um, four meter height uh, for the 900 setback so i mean I guess we would suggest that either the height be reduced to comply for the 900 setback or the setback be increased so it's no longer out of the uh, building envelope um, and not having the same amount of impact. Again, with the um, upper floor addition to the garage, there's an increase in the roof shown here. Um, I, partially, I presume that's for a structural reason because the concrete slab is going to be put in there. Also, there's planting in there, which we would suggest isn't going to have any benefit to anyone. There's deeper planter here, Will, to the street, but to this to the side here, 
um, it's pretty shallow, so that's, that's only going to be very low planting. Um, again, the gutter height for this addition wasn't provided, so we've extrapolated that. Um, and that setback to the upper floor addition, which also has an impact on 11A, uh, is also a non-compliant setback given the height. Um, so both of those are addressed in the report saying, well, look here, we acknowledge they're non-compliant, but we don't think they have an impact. Well, we would argue that they do. Um, and both from the, obviously the bulk and scale, the visual impact, but also because of um, the solar access, which is not uh, being complied with in June 21. Um, the height that's provided for the, um, for the garage extension, it's the same floor height as the existing house, but that doesn't have to be. Um, if, if the floor level is reduced, then the whole building could be reduced uh, without having to impact on heights in, within the rooms themselves. Um, existing garage roof has been somewhat altered, bathroom is 2.4 metres, could be lower. But in particular, this ground floor addition has you know, significant impact on the owners of 11A, and that's I guess, the primary focus of uh, our objection. And also we've got one non-compliance creating another non-compliance, which to us seems pretty unusual. So okay. Thank you very much. Now, um, I can see Kieran's still there. There was the architect that was on site. So I was wondering, Kieran, is he going to join us this afternoon as well? Yes, Mark um, is online. Yes, I'll, I'll let him speak. I'm here. All right. Okay. Fine. All right then. Okay. Good. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Now, just first of all, I'll just um, check that Sean is that. Um, is there anything further that you wish to address the panel on? Uh, I mean, I think both in our written submission and what we spoke about today, that that pretty much covers it. Right, thank you. And and we do have your written submission. I just wanted to confirm that. So thank yes, you. Yes, good. Um, yes, writing out. Um, so um, I'm going to ask Mark to respond to it. It is unusual not to have RLs on the plan. I'll just ask Mark to respond. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say this is, it's a, this is a difficult um, site difficult problems given the heritage uh, ex the heritage significance of the house um, and it has pushed uh, you know the, the house at the moment has a um, has some internal spaces which were uh, originally designed as living spaces being used as bedrooms etc so there's there's really a need for this for a couple of additional bedrooms um, on the site. To, to take the needs of the, the family who live there. Um, so it really, we, we obviously we looked at other options of, in the roof, which uh, affected the heritage uh, significance too much. So it pushes us out to this Western area. Um, and you know, it is difficult because there's only a certain amount of space there. And it does push us reasonably close to the boundary. And we're, we're trying to uh, as best as we can fit the requirements within that space and set them back from the boundary as much as possible. Um, so, I mean, we, we feel like this has been done in uh, a very sympathetic way, um, uh, trying to not match the, the uh, heritage um, arts and crafts style, but more as a, as a contemporary um, edition and a, more of a link between the two. Um, the effect of the, the position, it is unfortunate that the ground falls away so significantly and so suddenly to 11A, and that does, that does create um, some further issues. When the, the height non-compliance, I think, is, is, is overstated um, <clears throat> in the, in the uh, submitter's uh, presentation, um, a 5.8 height, it's not 5.8 measured from natural ground, it's it's more like 4.6, which yes, 
is uh, it is still a single story, but it does uh, it is higher than um, four meters. Um, we do feel that the uh, um, that the house still uh, complies with the, um, the the shadow diagrams and the the, the solar access to eleven A in that it provides at least three hours of sunlight in uh, on June twenty one. Um, and that's demonstrated by the shadow diagrams. Um, uh, there's, there's, there are additional shadow diagrams provided, as, as has been mentioned, to the equinox, and you know you can see that there, yes, there is a there is some small um, additions of shadow. Can I just stop you there for one moment? Because yes. Brett, could you please turn your visual um, off? Because we're being distracted by the fact that we can't see you, but. Okay. I don't think he can hear us. I might give him a call, Jan. Mm, okay, thank you. Um. Oh gosh. Sorry. I, um. Will I keep going? Are you okay? Yeah, you keep going. Okay. So um. The... We... Yeah, just we'll blank him out. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I haven't got Brett listed for this item. Yeah. Is he supposed to be on this item, Mark? Kieran? No. Who, who's that, sorry? Um, no. No, Brett Brown, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, no. no, I don't. Well, not that I know. No, no, no. Thank you so much. And it's not your problem, but it's just that he's been very distracting. But we're all good now, Mark. We're listening. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, so look, I, we we understand that there is some impact in shadow. Um, however, we feel that it still complies with the with the, the DCP requirements of, of solar access to eleven A, and a lot of the um, a lot of this is created by uh, the, the sudden drop off in the, the topography of the area, which is you know un unfortunate. Um, in terms of levels and things um yes okay we may have omitted uh, some levels and that certainly you know wasn't in, it wasn't trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes or anything and if we are required to uh if we we're asked to to provide those levels we, we can provide them um the levels that the submitter has put forward are, are reasonably close um yeah it's 70 point oh one three to, to 01 is yep that's that's close enough um so that that's the gutter line so yes the extrapolations are, are, are quite correct um in terms of planting and and height of the height of the uh the building look I, I guess if we were to reduce if we were to delete the um the garden roof that is going to reduce the height of the building but we feel like the garden roof is important to soften the building and to try and set it into the landscape. Um, and there is enough depth, uh, 300 is enough for um, quite a number of uh, species of grasses and things that, that do grow to... Uh, so so, what, so what, what is the additional height required for the um, green roof? Three, 300 millimetres. In, in, that's over the bedrooms, bedrooms um, three and four. Um, at the at the front on Selwyn Street, it's more like six hundred millimeters. So, obviously, along the garage, the face of the garage above the garage, uh, six hundred is going to you know it will support a bigger bigger plant. Uh, but a across the bedrooms, it's a three hundred millimeter depth, uh, which is still enough to substantiate uh, a, a large number of grasses and and small shrubs. Uh, we've done that many times in the past with success. Um, okay, so I suppose if you could just now respond to some of the other issues that were raised, which was um, to um, set it back further along that. Um, yeah. Street. Well, look, if we were to set back further, it just makes those bedrooms unusable um, and the, the you know, we're, we're, there's a link between garage and house, um, which is, I, I think, a reasonable um, uh, solution uh, and re requirement. Um, and that that 
that link also links the bedrooms with the inside of the house, which is also required and necessary. Um, so the, the bedrooms are not oversized. If we were to increase the, the, um, the setback further, it's really going to make those bedrooms quite unusable. And I think that the, the, uh, the small amount of additional sunlight that that would create by increasing a setback by, I don't know, 200 millimetres or 300 millimetres is, is, is it's just negligible, the amount of additional sunlight. And given that we are complying with the, the DCP requirements for, for the winter solstice in any case, um, I don't think it's required in my, in my opinion. Okay, so just the other question is, um, suggestion that was made was with respect to the height of the floors of those rooms, not the height of the floor, yeah, the, yeah. Um, whether in fact that, that that could be lowered. Yes, okay. Um, so the, the height of the garage is sort of 220 millimetres lower than the internal floor level of the house. So, you know, look, we could push we could push the bedrooms one and uh, three and four down, but it's 200 millimetres. Again, the the amount of additional sunlight to the to, to next door is negligible with that that sort of um, change. Well, I but also. I suppose the other issues that's been raised is not just the solar access, it was also the um, the bulk, um, visual bulk. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, look, at pushing it down means that you step up later. It does create issues with our stair up to the, to the um, attic space above the garage. Um, because having the, the stair raised, having that level raised by 200 millimetres helps us uh, markedly get up to, to the upper level. Um, by pushing the level down, it's, it will create some, um, some, some stair issues. Um, right. You know, look, I, again, 200 millimetres of, of bulk. Right, thank you. Um, I, look, I, I think. It works better with the it works better with the house to be on that same level. Can I ask the panel if they have other questions? Oh, is there anything further that you wish to make in your presentation, Mark? Um, I think just just on the privacy uh, between the, the two properties and the screening. Um, look, we we do show on the on the drawing that we are intending to remove that the, the planting and, and replant, but there are some, there's sort of two layers, you might have seen on site today, there's two layers of communities there. Yeah, uh, one is right on the boundary. Um, you know, every effort will be taken to, to keep, there's three or four, to keep those um, communities. Uh, yeah, you're, you're breaking up because Sorry. you're freezing. So perhaps you turn your video off and we might hear you better. Yeah, I, yeah. sorry, I, I just did. I'm not sure how much you heard of that, but um, we're, our intention would be, our, our want would be to keep three or four communities which are on the boundary um, and do whatever we can to try and protect those during um, construction because, you know, like the neighbour, the, our client wants, wants good privacy between the two properties um, and... They both both like greenery, um, so there's every effort will be made to to make sure that um, a green a green screen is put there. Okay, um, so just on that point, is it is it proposed because they're quite amenable to being um, taken out and then replanted camellias? So is that what you're proposing during the construction? Well, that that is what is on the drawings at the moment, but I think that there is a chance that we can keep those ones on right on the boundary there's a double layer and we will do every make every effort we can to to keep those ones on the boundary so that you know a green screen is maintained and where it's not the, our client is is happy to knit some other mature species in as has been as was done a, a few years ago when when one of the marais further down died um, and there's is now a lily pilly that, mm -hmm. that sits nicely within that space mm -hmm. okay yeah. Now, I'll just um, ask the other panel members if they wish to uh, ask you any questions. So, one moment. Um, uh, yes. Um, these were questions to Sean, but I'm not sure if he's still with us. 
Sean, yes, yes. um, thank you so very much. Um, Sean, you stated that you added RLs to your drawings because well, your profession is uh, an architect. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, Sean, did you assist yourself with the use of a professional surveyor to ascertain uh, those RLs? No, I just took them off the drawings um, with the drawings at a scale. So we just added them to the drawings. Um, we did request them from council prior to doing that, but we didn't get a positive response. So we just took it upon ourselves to extrapolate that and to give a good estimate to them. It sounds like we were pretty close. So. Okay, okay. Um, the drawings in front of the panel um, is this question to who oh, sorry this is still a question to Sean thank you mm -hmm. very much Sean um, the drawings in front of the panel suggest that the additional overshadowing uh, during the mid-year over your private open space actually falls over a gazebo in part it falls over a gazebo that we observe on site today adjacent to the pool. So the fact that the casibo is there, uh, does that show any preference for shade on that side of the pool, on part of the family that lives there? Uh, well, the main concern isn't so much the pool, and I guess we're showing that I haven't got those shadow diagrams in front of me, to be honest, but uh, the I mean, it's, it states in the council's report that it, it doesn't comply. Um, that's my understanding. So um, for the winter. Um, so I guess we would um, differ in our opinion on that and the council would seem to as well. Um, so it's not so much the, I mean, obviously any shadowing falling off a gazebo roof is, is uh, negates any impact but uh, there is an impact to the open space to the rear there and it, it doesn't um, get it's existing doesn't get three hours so uh, so the additional um, just makes the matters worse so um, that's our understanding and reading of the shadow diagrams is that they it doesn't currently get the three hours understood thank you very much so you're you're, you're just to summarize you are still concerned about the overall impact, uh, regardless of whether it falls over the gazebo or not. Well, the, the shadowing isn't solely to the gazebo, yes. it's also to the rear open space. So uh, beyond the pool area to the actual um, rear open space to the property. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, then. Very well. Um, is there anything further, Kieran, that, um, that, or Mark, that you wish to address the panel on? Uh, no, unless there's any other, um, other questions, or Kieran uh, may want to also say something. I might just make a quick comment. I think Mark's touched on sort of the the more technical components of, of the design, but obviously, you know, our sort of yeah, just two issues I will touch on from a resident point of view. Firstly, um, from a heritage sort of um perspective, firstly, you know, that's that's been key to us to kind of maintain the the existing heritage of, of the building. Hence uh as Mark mentioned, that's required this sort of solution given council. Um we're less keen for us to to go into the the roof space, the attic of the existing property. Um, you know, the addition is very modest, I think, in terms of the scale of the bedrooms and bathroom, you know, the very low roof heights. And as Mark said, uh, impinging on them further would make it um, pretty um, sort of uh, sort of really impact sort of our ability to use those rooms. Currently, as Mark said, you know, we have three children, two of them share a room in what is the original lounge room. And between the three kids, they've got one closet. So we're in desperate demand of space. This is a very modest uh, addition to achieve that. Um, at all times, uh, myself and my wife and the architect 
have tried to sort of minimise any impacts on neighbours uh, by having this very flat roof structure, um, you know, and, and sort of um, to, to try and minimise the, the impact both on the heritage aspect but, but neighbours as well. Secondly, on the privacy aspect, you know, you can see from the site visit today, uh, we've invested a huge amount of time and, and effort and money into sort of landscaping and the garden. Uh, it's our absolute desire to maintain privacy. So, you know, for us, screen screening is key. Uh, we've done that very successfully, as Mark pointed out, with the um, the uh, dual occupancy, which was built several years ago on the other side of us uh, with um, yeah, very tall but sort of um, quite effective uh, lily pillies put through there. Yeah, our ambition is to maintain as many of the camellias as we can um, yeah, to the extent down that side and where not possible, uh, we're definitely keen to introduce mature uh, plants there to, to continue to provide green screens between us and number 11. So, you know, all efforts from our point of view will be to maintain visual privacy for both them, but also for ourselves. Thank you, Kieran. I just, um, we want, we did ask on site um, if you were talking about your one of the conditions, the planting of yes. a uh, yes. So if we, if you got a proposal, yes, I was, yeah, yeah, I was going to uh, raise that too. Sorry. Um, so C twelve, we were wanting to instead of a native tree, a uh, replacement tree to to match the existing, which is a golden elm. So basically, replace like for like, please. Okay. Right and then C, then C15 is regarding bonds on trees. Uh, if we, I note the commentary in the in the uh, planning report talks about if we were to uh, restrict all construction access to Selwyn Street, then we could delete the bonds on three of the trees on Milner Crescent. And we'd like to do that if, if possible, please. So, and that has to do with C15 and C23, those two. Um, but did you, make, did you make a formal application to amend the DA in that regard? Uh, no, amend the conditions, these conditions, do you mean? Well, um, oh, I say, so you, you'd be prepared to accept a condition which says no access off... Um, That's right, off Milner Crescent. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, uh, and then that, that would, I, I believe, reading the council's report, that would delete three of the bonds um, for those those trees on uh, on Milner Crescent. Okay, then. Very well. Well, can I thank you all for participating? And as I said earlier, we'll make a decision and it will be on council's website by close of business on Friday. So thank you all very much for taking the time to address us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move to the, the next item on the agenda, which is item number three, and it's um, nine Gundamain Avenue, Caraba Point. And as I understand it, there, yeah, there are no submissions either from submitters or from the applicants team. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. I will just note for the record that the panel did visit the site today and the owner spoke to the panel um, and he advised the panel that he um, found the process wanting. And uh, I did indicate that that didn't prevent him from addressing the panel or uh, seeing it through, but he was insistent that he saw no point in that. Uh, so I just make that note for the record. And declined the visit. Sorry? And declined. Oh, and declined the invitation to, yes, to address the panel this afternoon. Very well. And um, the next item on the agenda is 50 to Brook Avenue, Cremorne, and that's for the demolition of the existing dwelling and construction of an attached dual occupancy and other works. And we uh, visited this site today and we also went on to the premises of the adjoining property at number 48, both of the dual occupancies there. I have um, Rosalind Fiscal, a neighbouring property.
property owner who wishes to address the panel. And I also indicated at the site inspection that I would allow um, George and um, the owner of number 48A to address the panel. So um, I'll just take a roll call first of all. We have uh, Stephen D'Souza, the architect. Thank you. Uh, we have Vicky and Jeff Parker, the owners online. Yep. Sorry. Vicky and Jeff Parker. Yep. Them. Yes. Um, and Brett Brown. Now, can I give you Brett Brown? Are you yes, there? And, um, yep. Sorry, yes, I'm, I'm here, uh, Madam Chair. Yep. Uh, can I just say to you, you can turn your camera on now, but it was very distracting having you get in your car and yawn and whatever else by having your camera on the whole of our proceedings earlier. Excuse me. Oh, my apologies. I didn't think I was on camera. Excuse me. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's, my name's Julie Brown. I'm a late um, person coming to this party. Yes. Right. Um, I'm from 33 to Brook Avenue. Right, okay, thank you. And are you observing or do you wish to? Uh, if I can make a comment at yes. some point, that would be great. Okay, then. Well, I'll um, I'll commence with you then, Julie. Thank you. And Chair, okay. if I could just interrupt George Floyd here as well. You invited me to attend. Yes, thank you, George. Yes. Um, and we had the other, um, do we have the okay. neighbour at 48A? Oh, right, okay. Can I comment? Ian, you're observing, is that correct? I am observing. I, I, we sent a late comment just last night and this morning. I hope you... Yes, um, we, did, we did receive those, Ian. Yes, thank and I've got you here as observing. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thank you. And George Lloyd, I've got you here to uh, address us as well. Very well. First of all, we'll start with Julie Brown. Okay, so I'm at 33 to Brook Avenue. And um, just wanted to say by submitting, um, going over the height limit by 33.5%, we'll reduce our view to mud flats on the other side of um, Northbridge uh, as a view we've enjoyed for the last 50 years. So I'm just putting, pointing that out and um, putting that forward. We did put in a submission earlier um, uh, outlining that problem and that's, I just wanted to put, the, put it on the table. Very well, and you made a submission, and did you provide any photographs at all? Yeah, we did. We did provide photographs. Okay. And, um, okay, so you're at number 33. Yep. Yeah. Unit okay. 2, the upstairs unit. Thank it's you. a view that I have enjoyed for over 50 years. Is it 23 or 33? 33. Oh, I see where you are. Yes. Right. Yep. right. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, can I um, now invite George George Lloyd? Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to address the panel. Um, we occupy the apartment number 52A to Brook, which, is, which adjoins the proposed development to the north. Um, 52A is the two lower levels of the property on 52 to Brook. Uh, we have uh, our upper level is the living level. It uh, has a ceiling height of 42, um, RL 42. The height of the um, proposed building is um, just under RL 49. So it will tower over the ceiling of our uppermost living level by seven metres. On the south side of the building, we have um, significant um, window area. And um, whereas now that lets in a, a, a substantial amount of light to the southern portion of our apartment, um, that admission of light is going to be blocked out by the building. So the issues are that um, we object to the um, uh, request that the height compliance be waived um, and as an alternative if the um, non-compliance with the height is not waived we'd be suggesting that the setback of the uppermost level be at least five meters 
to the eaves, which is the same as it is with the um, setback of the uppermost apartment on uh, in number 52. The, uh, the two, a couple of other areas where we have concerns. There is an awning which is, uh, covers the entry to um, the second dwelling in the proposed building. And that awning is not shown clearly in any section. However, it is shown in um, a couple of plan drawings, notably drawing 0204 and 0205. And the northernmost edge of that awning comes within centimetres, there's no dimension, but within a small number of centimetres from the property boundary. And in fact, it would be um, adjacent to and a few centimetres above a slot window at our entry level. So the view through that slot window, which is presently sky and a tree, would be replaced by a view of the underside of the awning. So, sorry, George, could you just um, refer us to the plan number that you're referring um, to? Sure. 0205. And 0204. I don't have numbers. Um, they were both in the... Um, report that um, in the council's report. Okay, so is it um, the, the number on the very bottom, just give me that number of the plan. On the right hand side. Oh, it's over, yes, on the right hand side. It, well, the very bottom number is 023, but that's yes, the, the project number, but then the actual plan number uh, is the revision. Of that is DA 0204. DA0205. I've got a one. Oh, I said it's the back one. Ah, oh, it's at the very back. There's DA0104. Yeah, that's not that. 0105. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. There's no 0201. Um, okay. There's sections towards the. They're oh. elevations. Elevations. Sorry, they're plans. Plan views. <laughs> Uh, panel, I could I could share my screen for you guys and just show you if you're yes. having trouble. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll just go. I'll just go to a higher quality. The report, yeah. yeah, that's that's it. Thank you. Uh, I'll just go down a page, guys. Okay. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> so you can see the. Um, where yeah. the words entry awning are, and that entry awning is not in here. Oh, yeah, you've got 40 centimeters thick. That's right. Yes, from there. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll ask the architect to respond to that shortly, but um, any other issues that you have, George? Uh, yes. Um, general concerns about the landscape plan, the view to the west and um, southwest is important. It embraces Willoughby Bay as well as Bushland yeah. and um, um, houses and buildings and district um, on the other side of, um, of Willoughby Bay. The mature height of, I think it's 14 trees that are proposed to be um, planted against the um, western boundary of the property is 10 metres, that would be three metres over the ceiling height of our living area. And the mature height of the um, plants that are proposed to be, of the trees that are proposed to be planted along the southern boundary of the property are um, up to five metres, which um, is just about a metre below our ceiling height. So, if the trees are planted to those heights, they will um, pretty well obscure the view from our living area and definitely obscure the view from our garden area of um, Willoughby Bay to the west, as well as the uh, district area, district to the west. 
And the final one is that the balconies on the um, northern side of the proposed building all protrude some distance. It's about a metre, it might be a bit more beyond the privacy screens, which um, gives rise to overlooking and privacy issues. These are all detailed in my submission of the 17th of um, January. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Thank you. Um, now I'm just going to invite the other people who... Um, now, is the owner of 48A here? You're, you're, you're on mute, I'm afraid. Um, just unmuted, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yes, I'm Ross Fischel of 48A to Brook Avenue, and I'm also speaking on behalf of uh, Jean and Janine Akkad, who could not be online today, in 48B directly above us. We are two storeys uh, apartments, one above the other. And our objection is mainly regarding the landscape plan that George has also discussed just now, which has such a large number of trees, eight blueberry ash, which we believe can grow up to 15 metres, not 10 metres as on the plan. I've sourced that from information as well as six water gums on the western boundary. Now that's our main source of sunlight and our view to the bay um, on the side. Um, the type and the number of trees of 10 plus metres, we believe is quite unsuitable to the, to the site. Uh, they have very dense foliage and in the case of the blueberry ash flowers and berries, which could cause an awful lot of mess, and uh, look, we would just like um, Vicky and Jeff to consider uh, reducing the number of trees and shrubs on that boundary of a more, for a more suitable type, which will not affect our solar access, our sunlight, and not overshadow our balconies, which are in daily use, and, and also not create a mess with flowers and berries and lots and lots of dead leaves. May I just say that I do understand that they, the owners, um, will want some screening from the neighbour behind, but uh, that has a lot of solar panels on the roof, and I know Vicky is very distressed about that. But that dwelling is on Wonga Road, well below the level of Tobruk Avenue, and I just wonder if the trees need to be as many, as thick, and as high as is proposed on that plan. I'd be happy to sit down with Vicky and Jeff and discuss it any time that they wish to do so. But um, please, that's our main objection. And Jean and Janine are also um, very badly affected because they're higher up. And um, we are happy that they have actually reduced the whole size of the dwelling, which um, is going to affect uh, Jean and Janine's privacy and also um, their views on the top. But uh, at least if we can have the garden modified, that is something that we'd all be very happy about. Thank you. Thank you. Well, can I also say that there is a general policy that we provide um, in particular native trees and eucalypts and things like water gums are usually seen as uh, favoured in these areas because you see through gums as opposed to them completely um, becoming in, uh, an impenetrable wall. And can I just say we noticed on site of your property that there was Leylandi's um, planted all along the boundary um, between yourselves and this particular property. Uh, we will look at the landscaping, but at the same time, one can't expect for no trees, and it, and it is that council's policy to have trees um, planted. So, but we hear what you say, and we'll look at the varieties. Uh, it's the number of trees as well. It seems to be an extraordinary That's what I just said. Number. Number. Yeah, we did say that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. But they add more to the environment than a Leylandi hedge. But they are blocking views as well. And as George was saying, and um, this other lady that was speaking earlier, no, I, I we just said that bought our the, homes I... because of the beautiful views. And it's really part of the um, whole beauty of living in that area to enjoy and, the views. Oh, of course it is. And, and when you see the views across the other side, it is very well vegetated. And that's what you've got a view to as well. So we understand your concerns and we'll we'll look at um, the number and species. Uh, 
Is there anybody else um, here, no, that wish to, um, no objectors, no Could others? I just make one more point? Is that, would, could I just make one more point? You may, yes. Um, the main issue is the impact of the height uh, being 33.5% over the, max, the maximum allowed height. And it's not just me that's affected. It's several, it's several occupants in that area that have enjoyed wonderful views for many, many years. So it's just it's not just me, but also my neighbours. And, and and sort of to go over thirty three point five percent over the maximum permitted height is ridiculous, extraordinary, actually. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Very well. Um, now we'll move to the applicants team which is the architect and the owners and Brett Brown, if he's there now. We lost Brett. Yes, no, I'm here, Commissioner. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Commissioner, but thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I've just come from a Section 34 conference, which is partly right. the reason I'm in my car. So I apologise for that. Right, okay. All right, then. So, um, Brett, who wants to lead off your team? Um, I'll lead off. If you don't mind, Stephen, the architect here is there for questions, yep. um, including that specific issue raised by um, the neighbour in relation to that entry awning. I'll let him deal with that. I'll deal more directly with um, the other issues raised by by the uh, submitters. Um, obviously, the views are a, a contentious issue, and we understand that, that people enjoy their existing views. Um, but it's a matter of fact that this house is sits well below the uh, existing height limit and also well below the heights of the adjoining dwellings in this location. So invariably any redevelopment of this site is going to result in some loss of views for, for some neighbours. And um, so, so uh, sorry, Brett, we just heard that, um, no, no, we don't have a debate, a town hall debate here and the submitters have had their opportunity to make comment, but now I'm hearing from the applicants team. So, um, we we will be the ones that then make the decision after hearing both sides. So, Brett, just to uh, clarify, are you saying there's no exceedance or no four point six required? No, no, not at all. No, I'm just I'm just saying that invariably redevelopment is going to result in view loss, whether the proposal complies or not. The council's done a very, or we have done a very detailed analysis of the view impacts of the proposal versus the view impacts of a building that complies. With the, okay, with the controls. Just, just on that point, Brett, um, did you go into the property at 33 to Brook Avenue? Um, personally, I didn't. Um, obviously not today or, or not previously, but the architect has done a view analysis from um, the adjoining properties. Um, we do, number, sorry, number 30. That's not the question. That's not the question. No, no, I asked, well, question. Stephen can tell me, have you done a view analysis from number 33? Hi, um, Chair. We, yeah, as part of the, the council uh, amendment process, um, we were asked to get survey information and do a view analysis from um, floor level. So we have, we got that information and we've taken the photo and done a, and from, num from, num that. From, num from number 33? Yeah, we've, we've done 33 through to 39 as part of um, a request by uh, Mr. Davies. So we've, uh, that's all, that was all provided as part of the so submission, uh, the amended plan submission, I guess, amended information. Right. Okay. Page 29. Right, yeah. Um, so continue, please, Brett. Are you there, Brett? Sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So on page 29, you can see that analysis and you can see we've looked at the impacts of the proposal compared to the existing situation and also um, in relation to a complying building envelope. Um, and you can see that the impact of the proposal is in fact less in some cases than a complying building. So in, in terms of the way the building's been designed, um, it's highly articulated. It does have setbacks which allow the reviews of the waterway to be retained. Um, and yes, it's it's worse than the existing situation, but it's um, commensurate with what you'd expect from a complying building. So in terms of the quantum of the variation, yes, there's a significant variation, but it's it's typical for the buildings on this street and 
the panel has uh, approved a development quite recently um, with a similar level of non-compliance. There's obviously a very steep fall from the street um, to the rear of the properties, um, and the building stepped from two storeys to four storeys. And a lot of these properties already have existing amounts of excavation, which obviously make the non-compliance um, actually worse um, than it is in a visual sense. Um, so the, the clause 4.6 dealt with that issue and all the other issues that arise from the, the non-compliance with the height control, um, touching on other issues such as overshadowing. Um, those issues um, aren't really related to the height per se. It's more related to the, to the setbacks and the relationship of the adjoining dwellings to, to the proposed dwellings. Um, so there, there are impacts, but by and large, the majority of the um, orientation of the adjoining buildings is um, sort of towards the water um, and the impact of the, the building isn't um, on the living areas that, that face that direction. There's some impact on some side facing windows, which tend not to be living areas. The architect's gone to quite a lot of trouble to uh, modulate the building, to set the building back in accordance with council's controls um, to mitigate the impacts, both in relation to overshadowing and also privacy. The, uh, okay, the dwelling is just, obviously- Can I just stop you there for a moment, Brett? I do notice, sure. and, I, and I obviously had read the report, but at the same time, I noticed for number 33, it talks about um, the upper levels. And as I understand it, there are that is a there are flats or different properties within that um, property. Uh, yeah. So the analysis that that is there, as as noted in the report, it says from the upper level. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering whether it's Madam Chair. Yes, I'll it's allow a, you. It's, yes. A, it's a duplex. Unit top. It's the yes. top unit. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's not. So, there's two units, and it's the top unit. Yep. The top unit, okay. And it was was the same analysis done for the bottom property, Brett? But no, um, sorry, Chair, but no one has been inside our property to. Are you the lower lower one or the upper one? I'm the upper one. Upper. Okay. Um, Stephen, um, I think we'll confirm that it's only been done from that one viewpoint. Um, yeah, Council's sure. request obviously asks us to address the impact from number thirty three, which is what we've done. Um, and based on the analysis that we've done, I mean, obviously the views lower down will be more greatly affected, but the conclusion would be the same, that a complying building is going to have uh, as much, if not a greater impact than, than what's being proposed. Okay, so can I understand then um, from Stephen, um, what program was used for the view analysis um, if you didn't take photographs within the, the properties? Hi, um, we use Archicad to mo um, and survey information to model um, all the the neighbouring buildings and the waterway, as well as the um, not quite sure what the other side of Follies uh, Willoughby Bay would be called, but um, and then information photos were taken from the submission from thirty three, um, and the camera was positioned, you know, um, accordingly. What a drone! No, no, no. Sorry, the the submission from thirty three included photos, so we put that in our in our view analysis. And then I, I meant the camera view in Archicad was, you know, within reason. So, so you knew, so so did you have surveyed information in terms of the RLs? RLs off the um, balconies, yeah, and the roof. Uh, we we went back after. Jim's initial uh, RFI letter and uh, asked the surveyor to survey 39 and 33. We already had 35 and 37. Okay. Go on, Brett. Um, so, yeah, what I was just saying uh, was in relation to uh, the privacy issues. Um, Yes, once again, the architect's taken great lengths to orientate the main windows uh, towards the view and away from the adjoining properties. Um, they tend to be, um, yeah, non-major non windows. And also, there's also privacy screens, um, particularly to balconies where there's potential for overlooking the adjoining properties. Um, in terms of the landscape, um, 
uh, Madam Chair, you've made some comments about a decision there. We understand there's a balance between, um, you know, amenity and privacy and views and all that sort of stuff. Um, we believe the council's approach is is reasonable and our design is reasonable. We'll leave it up to you to consider that consider that further. Um, otherwise, uh, just any questions that you may have. No, no, we might go to the architect now. Um, does anyone have any questions of Brett? No, very well. We'll go to the architect. And um, first of all, we'd ask you to respond to the awning on the boundary or near to. Yeah, um, so hello all. Would you, in terms of the, the architectural reason for the awning, it, it stems from the LEP non-numerical uh, standard to have the, ha the dual occ occupancy not appear as two houses. So uh, we took, took from that the door that's accessed, you know, from the northwestern elevation. So the awning is functioning as basically cover for for someone entering that that property now. Um, does it have to be that close to the boundary? It doesn't need to. No, no. I was just thinking, looking at that. Uh, the idea was that it would be supported by columns that could be in that um, you know narrow garden bed, but it, it it could it could cantilever and the column could be located elsewhere. Um, uh, perhaps set back, you know, just given give the door. I I would like about a meter meter of cover for, you know, person in a um, wheelchair or aging in place, um, which is so. So what know. what ha so are you saying it could be set back off the boundary nine hundred? Um, yeah, I oh, I'd like it to be maybe meter. a meter from the from D one point one. I don't know if you've got your plans up there, but um. Well, why wouldn't you have it a metre off the boundary? Uh, just to give a bit more cover for per a person entering the door. But uh, if, if, if you Well, like you need to recess the door. Okay. Um, we could, yeah, I mean, if that, if the panel, if well, I'm happy to make that change if that's um, required and, yeah, it doesn't also have to have a green roof on it. So, yeah, I'm happy okay. to. Mm -hmm. So um, we we need to hear your comment on the height exceedance. Uh, listen, we yeah uh, in in response to you know Jim um, Jim's report and in discussions with Brett from the outset, uh, given the natural topography of the land um, without excavated levels and the context, the building's been designed to work in um, to work to work in with its surroundings. Uh, and there has been discussion with uh, neighbours and amendments um, from the original submissions to bring the top level bulk, reduce the top level bulk, and bring it closer to the to, to Brook Avenue itself um, to mitigate any um, to, to first of all to reduce the exceedance and then mitigate any further issues. Um, the I guess the the overarching principle is to maintain. The, the appearance as a two-storey dwelling from Tobruk Avenue and the articulation um, creates horizontality so as to not, you know, tower over um, the streetscape and the public domain. Uh, and that's, um, and yes, the site does fall away steeply as, you know, is in, as Brett noted, so that um, the numerical, uh, it does, the numerical um, exceedance is there, but... Um, yeah, that's how we we've kind of addressed. We've tried to minimise the potent, the ad, adverse effects of that high exceedance. So, um, is there any opportunity to set it down further into the site? I'm not saying change the setback to the street. Um, set it down further uh, in terms of uh, the RLs lower. Um, <laughs> Listen, we looked at that and just with the, uh, we didn't really want to be too much lower. Um, uh, that's, that's um, I don't know if there is any opportunity. I probably need to just have a look at what that, that means a bit further. But, um, yeah, not, not knowing the survey levels adjacent um, off the top of my head, this is the level that we sort of came up with just working off the existing. Um, 
Yeah, yeah if so you look yeah. at the northern northern elevation, Madam Chair, um, you can see the the lowest levels relative to the levels of the adjoining properties, and they're very very similar. Um, so to be consistent with those and to maintain um, those levels, um, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to push it down further and it increases the amount of excavation and, and changes the relationship to the levels of the, of the adjoining neighbours. At the moment, all the levels fairly much correspond with each other and so all the privacy measures um, obviously reflect that relationship so that would upset that as well. Uh, well, given that the um, context in terms of the neighbour at 52A and um, the exceedance in the height there, is, is there um, an opportunity to set that portion of the building back further than the setback? You heard, you heard the um, objector from 52A. So have you got a response to that, Stephen? So, um, Emma, we, um, listen, given the setbacks that we discussed directly with the neighbour at 48A um, and the, the rooms there, which we don't think are overly generous, being the offices and the three bedrooms. Sorry, I've got my plans on there. No, I was, I was talking about 52A. Yeah, yeah oh, sorry, I'm just talking about the, the width that we have in that um you know, given the council controls and the the kind of um, envelope being, you know, a long, skinny um, volume, uh, we we this is the probably the minimum that we we could go in terms of setback from the northern north western boundary. Um, the minimum, but can you make it greater, um, Madam Chair? If you can look at Plan DA O two O four, which is the third floor level. Um, I can share that if you want, Brett. Yes, um, that'd, be, that'd be great. Thanks, Stephen. Um, you can see that the, the top level there relative to number 52 um, has been modulated to be set back um, to a similar degree as, as that building. That building um, sets back where it's close to the common boundary um, and then extends further to the rear of the property. And that's what we've done with our design that part of the building that's closest to that boundary is set well back behind number 52 to Brook where the bathroom is. Then the bedroom comes out a little bit, but once again, you can see on those plans, the, the minimum setback that's required there is 2.5 metres and, and that part of the building's actually set back a lot further um, than that, that minimum setback that's required. So we believe we've got quite a generous relationship um, to the setback to the side boundary and also the relationship of how number 52 is designed. Yes, views across the site, across the side boundary are going to be affected, but in terms of where we sit relative to um, those two buildings uh, on the adjoining properties, we're, we're very much um, consistent or set back further than, than they are. No, I, well, it's not just the setback, it's then the height, it's the relative heights. of the two buildings. Sorry, uh, Brett, I think you're on mute, I think, Brett, sorry. Yeah, apologies there. Oh. Um, I was just saying, yeah, it's not the height that's really impacting on those side views from number 52. It's really the side and rear setbacks. And as I said, we're we're very generous in that respect. We're set back yes. more than is required. Okay. Well, it was it was not so much the view, but um, the the massing, I suppose. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, we have modulated particularly that facade. There's there's. Yes. Can, can we go through, Stephen? Can we go through the um that side elevation, please? Yes. Sure. Sure. One second. Sorry. There you go. Is that is that big enough for? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. So that upper level is set back. Yeah, that upper level is set back to 
Yeah. I mean, the original submission's shown in tan, but the upper level's set back from the lower levels. Um, right. Okay. So and the, the, an additional what is the upper level set back? Um, well, if that one's got me. Um, Just while Stephen's finding sorry. that information, it's also um, set back from the side boundary as well, which is hard to pick up in that elevation. But that top level actually sets back further from the level below. At, no, at that I, level realize, well. I, re I realize that, and I've just asked what the additional setback is. Sorry, guys, it's um, I haven't got the cat on, but um, So, um, if we were, sorry. I'm just on PDF viewer. So this, um, so I can provide this, um, I don't know, by email if it, if it's required, but, um. Anyway, we'll be able to look at the plans and yeah, in detail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you'd know off the top of your head. Anyway. Okay. Um, no other issues that you wish to raise with the panel? Um, I just had a m very minor uh, wording for um, one condition, which was C6A, which was the related to the four boreholes before any construction certificate. Um, just in conversation with the geotechnical engineer and their, their rig, um, we were just asked that we could do a, a, a construction certificate for demolition, so maybe... Um, you know, uh, a change of wording there. Um, happy to discuss with Jim and the. So, do, do you actually, so do you actually right. so do you actually have staging in this project so that we can identify at what point the construction certificate you're talking about? Um, no, we don't have staging. I was uh, um, well, we could do four boreholes in the driveway down to the. Um, down to the basement level, but I, I don't think that's the objective of this no. condition. It would be more to to do it around the side, around the perimeter, you know, around the excavated proposed excavation. So, um, just speaking to JK Geotechnics, they okay. They, so after demolition, you're asking? Yeah, okay. that would be a request. And then a second very minor thing is condition G two mentions a video for the plumbing works is executed, but in the heading, but it doesn't say it in the condition. So um, Sorry, what number was that? That's G2 um, for occupation certificate. Mentions okay. a video for the stormwater um, in the heading, but nothing in the condition itself. Um, okay. Right, yeah. Thank you for identifying that. Um, and uh, so that's all you have. And can I also invite the owners wish to address the panel? I did know we had a um, Vicky and Jeff Parker online. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. We're, we're, we're both here. Um, yep. We, we've we lived in the house for more than 20 years. And um, as has been pointed out, it, it is substantially lower than the two adjoining properties. I, I'd be interested to know if Stephen agrees with the claim that the, that uh, about 33% um, exceeding exceeding uh, a height standard by 33%. But, but that building is much lower than the adjacent two properties. Um, it we it uh, the, bu the building was built in the late 1940s, and um, there is uh, there is a very substantial problem with dampness. Um, at the current time, the, there, there are, as soon as it rains, there are, there's essentially a creek that flows underneath the building, which makes the, the lower level um, mm -hmm. almost, almost unoccupiable. In, yep. mm -hmm. in, it's wet. Uh, we've, had, we've had 
very bad mould problems down there. I mean, I know other people have had mould problems as well, but we've had very bad mould problems and we think that the only way really to fix the house is, is to demolish the whole thing and start again with the house. Yeah. Um, the house constructed on a on a platform on on a on a concrete pad, which has got blue metal underneath and plenty of drainage channels, um, yeah. egg egg drains and so on under the slab, so that uh, together with a collection drain around the around the slab, so that so that that problem of uh, dampness uh, doesn't um, doesn't affect us in the future and be um, avoided. Mm -hmm. yeah, we. I'm I'm a little bit upset about George's claims about the uh, impact on the boundary of forty. I beg your pardon, of fifty-two to Brook Avenue because when fifty-two to Brook Avenue was built, mm -hmm. uh, the building was fifty-two. Fifty-two building was set back from the boundary with us, and and uh, whilst we were overseas, a section ninety-six application was was oh, launched yeah. and before we got back from overseas George's building wasn't George but George's building had extended right up to our boundary so um, I think that needs to be taken into account very well thank you uh, is nothing further you wish to say to us no that's all thank you thank you uh, now I hope I've given everybody the opportunity um, of saying what they wish. Madam Chair, um, may I say one more thing? Um, well, as I said, it's not a town hall debate. No, I understand. I just wanted to say thank you, firstly, for allowing me to speak in the first place since I came into it quite late. Um, I just want to say all I would ask is that the building height and bulk be lowered so as to acknowledge the interests of all the neighbours, the enjoyment of all the neighbours, myself and surrounding me. Uh, the applicant has a magnificent view anyway. Uh, this will be enhanced by this development, while our view and our neighbour's view will be pretty well ob obliterated. I just need to put that point in. And I do thank you once again for allowing me to talk. Very well. Sure. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll close this item. And um, uh, we do have some questions from the panel. So can I invite the panel? No, no, I yep. Uh, yep. Uh, this is a question for the architects. If they could kindly share their screen um, as to the high plane diagram that shows the area of the building that exceeds the high plane. I can do that. Uh, sorry, it might take me. I just don't know. I had to break it into little sets so my computer would. Um, uh, just give me one second, guys. Um, I'll just find it for you. That's a good question. Is that, is that, um... that's correct? That, that's the yeah. So, uh, the question I have is the area that protrudes above the high plane is much lower in the in the scarring in, in the draw in your view analysis what is the view loss generated by the excedence can you point that I, uh, this this portion here what is the excedence yeah I, I think um in the view analysis there's there's a there's three there are three images in each um, set which one is the existing one is a compliant envelope and one is the the this this proposed envelope um, for the for the occupants of the buildings on the high side Brett just jump in if, if I'm you know if, I, if you need to add anything 
um, the 8.5 metre control closer to the street it results in a worse outcome in terms of views. Then, so um, arguably the non-compliant, this non-compliant area that you can see in some instances is um, has has no impact over a complying envelope because, uh, sorry, I've got that blue screen, but up here in this this location because of the steep nature of the site, um, the 8.5 metre height plane is, um, you know, much higher than the than the proposed roof ridge RL. Does... Yeah, that's, that's correct, Stephen. So because of the sloping nature of the site, the closer you come to the street, the higher the 8.5 metre yeah. height limit is. Yeah. And so therefore the parts of the building further down the slope in the views that we've analysed sit behind that impact and therefore those parts of the building by and large don't have an, an additional impact beyond what a complying envelope was uh, has. Um, so the elements at the very front of this property, those are below the height control by how much? Um, I do not know that off the top of my head. Um, on the the streetscape elevation, um, you know, it looks to me to be about eight hundred millimeters, ranging from about eight hundred millimeters to one point two. Um, and you know, with um, yes, that that would be my answer. But I couldn't couldn't give you correct correct numbers here of these plans um, at the at that front front boundary line from council. Right. So inevitably, is it correct to say that if you were compliant with the building height at the front and still be non-compliant at the rear, you will have far worse visual impacts if you increase the roof at the front and lower it at the back? Um, yes, from our analysis in terms of views from the high side of Tobruk, yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. I yeah. have no more questions. Yeah. Okay, then. Very well. Um, I would like to thank everybody for their time this afternoon, and we will be giving this matter, as all matters, very careful consideration um, before our decision is made on the Council's website Friday afternoon. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Right. So the next matter that we have is number 126 to 128 Willoughby Road, Crow's Nest. And um, I have here, this is for alterations and additions, added two additional levels to an existing uh, development. And we have no submitters. We've got one written submission only, and we have uh, Ken uh, Demlarkian and Scott Milner and Mark Schofield. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Thank you. So I'm in your hands as to who wishes to lead. Um, um. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, um, have I unmuted myself correctly? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, and thank you very much. Um, so, look, I've asked um, I've asked our planner Mark Schofield and the architect Scott Miner to join us. Um, unfortunately, um, we were probably given a little bit less um, notice that this was going to the planning panel uh, today than we would have liked. Uh, I have quickly, so I didn't want to use up all the time, uh, all my time in um, in addressing you. Uh, at the front end, um, we, this is the second time it's coming to the panel. Um, you've made previous comments. Um, I cannot recall whether the panel is made up of the same participants as last time, but I thank you for for taking the time to look at it. You have in your you have in your submission the revised drawings that have been revised and they've been clouded and read, where changes have been made um, uh, in consideration of the uh, comments previously. Um, I don't know if the members of the panel have had an opportunity to to review that 
prior to the meeting, but they've been clouded in red. Um, and uh, as I said, we haven't been given a big opportunity. We're all here to, um, to I, I suppose, respond to any queries or concerns that you might have and might save the time to do that in response. I don't know if Mark um, uh, would like to make any comments um, up front. Um, and I leave that to him. We haven't had a chance to confer or or prepare in the normal manner to make this uh, a little bit easier. But um, I just reserve myself to be able to respond uh, if the panel has any has any um, queries or concerns. Very well, thank you. Uh, well, we did inspect the site uh, today, and um, so we are very familiar with its context, etc. And. This would be a, a new panel with a few it's a bit more yeah. talk. Um, so can I just um, ask you to make your submissions, um, whether it be Mark or Scott in that regard, and um, why you think it's unreasonable in terms of the recommendation or refusal. And uh, and as we know, we've got a clause 4.6 in terms of the height, which is a threshold question for the application. I'm yes. presuming, sorry to interrupt, I'm presuming, Mark, you, you'll deal with that if that's all right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, but before you do, the one thing, sorry, I apologise um, to the panel. The one thing I didn't mention is that in the, um, the comprehensive report that's been submitted to you, the one thing that wasn't submitted is the supporting photo montages and things and so mark if you're going to refer to those they're actually not contained but i have them here to refer to them uh, or share the screen if, if we, have, we do have photo montages uh, there, there's a there's one specifically prepared for you with outlines in red and so on so you have um they're, they're not contained um um, Madam Chair, within there, but um, I will just sit in the background and let Mark do it and uh, Mark present it and see. Okay, very well. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks, thanks, panel members. Um, it, yeah, it might, if it's okay, I might just talk to the issue of height. Um, in, in reading Council's report, I'm not, I'm not, I'm of the view it doesn't fairly represent what our 4.6 is trying to say. Um, so, just as a starting point, we. Um, understand and and value will be road and um, we understand there's a certainly a character to it and there's certainly elements of that character that are very important um, for the area however it's our view that willoughby road isn't um, consistent all, all along its way so when we talk about that really consistent scale and that sort of heritage form it's very much on the southern end of the road um, up towards falcon street and as you come down to where our side here is um, the development becomes more varied um, and there is additional buildings that are newer and that they do, they are of greater height um, and they all perform part of the visual catchment of our building. Um, the, the report as, as, uh, as it's been prepared by council essentially takes the view, I think that the, um, the character of the area is defined simply by the boundaries, I think of, of the road and possibly what's in the character statement. I would take the view that when you stand out the front of our site, the visual character is much broader than that and the development in those surrounding zones, which is taller, um, certainly plays part and, and is a prominent part of our, the visual character of our area. So in terms of the site and the way that the building has been designed, we've been very cognizant of that character. Um, so as you come down um, Willoughby Road, so if you're coming from Falcon Street heading north, um, there is the building's been carefully designed to sit behind number 118 Willoughby Road. So I'm not sure if Ken was talking before about some photo montages and where those did present into the um, the RFI that we gave to council, um, but they don't appear to have made it into the report. But what those montages show is that as you come down Willoughby Road, the upper story of our building is is all but hidden behind the neighbouring building. It's just, there's very much a, a small small upper corner of the building that's um, that's visible. So really, it's not going to have the sort of dominating effect on Willoughby Road um, that I think the report. There we go. Yeah. That the dominating that the report um, I think envisages it's going to have. When you move across um, directly in front of the site, um, what the building's been designed to do. You can see it there. It's two stories at the moment. Um, so what, we, what the upper story, the new third story on the street has been set um, to match the parapets of the adjoining building. So those parapets step down Willoughby Road 
Um, so our, our parapet there, you can see steps down. So very much at the street level and at the pedestrian level, uh, the scale of our building is very much complementary of what's on our adjoining sites. You can see that there with the red line that Ken's got there. Um, so as you're standing directly opposite the site on Willoughby Road, the parapet there, um, once again, has been designed to hide the views of the upper story. So um, there's a there's a sight line diagram that appeared in the in the 4.6 and in the, and in the plans. And what it shows is that that parapet um, basically hides the majority of that floor, with the exception of the sort of thin edge of the roof line at the upper floor. So you can see from this diagram here that the the upper level does become more visible as you move down to the corner of Albany Street. Uh, and I think in council's report they note that it's being visible from there, and we acknowledge that. But we think once you get to that point context has very much changed. You can obviously see the large building behind us, the eight-storey building at number 31 Albany Street. Uh, that doesn't disappear. That is, in our view, very much part of our visual character. And I'm not sure how we can um, say that that's not, you know, a, 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 you know not, that, not an important that, element. That, that, sorry, that has a, a zoning mark which allows for 12 metres. That's, yeah, it's, no, it's As actually... As to this um, split, which is 10 along Willoughby Road. That one's that one's got uh, can go to twenty six, but it's actually thirty. So that that one there, councils made a, a point of saying that they don't um, they don't ever vary their controls. Well, that one there is is a variation of the control. Um, so I think that one, um, you know, I I I, I feel it's a, it's an important part of the character of this area. Um, and equally, where you're standing on that photo, directly behind you is the um, is one hundred and one Willoughby Road, so the shopping centre, which sort of varies between four and four and seven stories. Um, I don't know that's been zoned, but it's also part of the visual character. With we talk a lot about this section of the Willoughby Road as being, you know, almost exact in character in terms of its scale, but really there is variety in character. Uh, and in particular, you can see down the laneway there, Hume Lane, that's that's our building on the right hand side, which is overtaken by um, the, the adjoining building on 101 Willoughby Road, and then 31 Albert New once again rides right above us. So. I think there is variety in the character there. I think it's it's incorrect to say that it's all it's all two and three stories in on this section of Willoughby Road and, and in this visual character catchment. Yep. Um so I think that's that's our point. That yeah, the design the design's been very much carefully thought through. So we have the parapet there, the upper floor is set back four metres behind the parapet. Um, so that gives it modulation and we think it, as these diagrams are showing that it's 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 very much minimised its visual impact um, to the to the extent where we don't think it will be um, unduly um, unduly um, visible from most most sections. It will be, as I said, section visible from this section, but we think this section of the street has a very much different visual character to the other sections of Willoughby Road to the south. Amen. Um, and um, Ken, you we do have some questions, but is there anything further that you wish to make a presentation about? Uh, no, I'm happy to take your questions. Scott? Ken? No? I'm happy to um, take questions too. Yeah, okay then. Uh, the only thing the only thing I was going to add, Madam Chair, is that when you talked about the height and the 10 metre and so on, that we we shared in our in our um, statement and the clause 4.6 that I mean even the building next door. And the buildings um, at the end of Albany Street this way. So I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this way, I mean, they all vary. They all vary um, above the height line, and yet they've all been dealt with with a variation um, on the basis that they actually really, on this sort of context, the fact that they do sit within the the correct context of um, its adjoining adjoining buildings and for the purpose. And and we feel that this would this would actually um, provide a benefit to um, this end of Willoughby Road, et cetera, particularly given the, the high quality of the building that we've proposed and, and renovated to date. Yeah, well, in terms of the street, that a story on the street, well, yes, I would, I would agree, but it's it's what you see behind. So, um, uh, this, this portion, Madam Chair? Well, that, that's behind, yes. And yes. Um, as I said, at the street level, I don't have an issue at all. Um, With but, this, yeah. Uh, Okay, so we do have some questions. Okay, thank no. you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, if the panel were to be of uh, in agreement with you about the accidents uh, and 
we also agree on next door uh, mirroring your design and going above uh, their height by six meters. What happens to the amenity of the unit number two? Laurie, would you repeat the um, the sort of the middle of that? If the which one, if council would, if no, the panel were to agree, yeah, if, if we agree with you, and we also agreed with number one thirty, that they could go up six meters in height and mirror the height that you're proposing, how much solar access will penetrate into unit number two, the lower and the upper level? Um, obviously, um, I, I don't know uh, if somebody if somebody else in the team wants to answer that, but from my perspective, in the same way as the litmus test that the council and the panel are applying to us at the moment about the suitability of our building in the context of what we've got around us um, and the fact that the building steps down towards the corner, I think that... I think that this, what we're proposing on our building is suitable and the fact that we've got some aperture to the north um, is, and we're trying to make um, what's the best benefit out of that aperture. If council, when they assess the one on the corner, if they allow them to provide to go high, much higher than us, then isn't that isn't that somewhat contra contradictory to um, to our position now relative to the one, the building to our south, the big dark gray building, because we're not proposing, we're not proposing to to ruin their amenity and we have stepped back our building. So we will lose some amenity to unit two. We would lose some amenity to unit two, but I think that that's actually part of the consideration of ongoing development as we move from one development to another. All right, so there, um, I, I, I just recapitulate you, would agree that unit number two will lose its amenity. Well, some of it, not all of it. It would, it would, its amenity would be, would be diminished um, in the same way as we always have to argue over. I mean, I listen to you guys argue over view loss and view interference. They would lose some amenity, certainly, but they wouldn't lose all of it. Mm. Okay, I, my I next, think, my could next. I just, could I just make a point there as well? Just I think in terms of if we look at the image that's on the screen now, we can see that that building below us beside us is actually below us so if, if they're to go ahead and do a development and they provide uh, some sort of setback like we have and then they're also set below us i don't think that there would be you know with a bit of good design there's probably an opportunity to keep our solar access to a reasonable level i don't think having a, a building on that site necessarily would be um you know Rachel. completely detrimental to our building mm. Thank you. The next question is um, with regards to the depth of the units. Uh, and in this case, let me refer to apartment. Yes, so apartment number four, the depth from the glass facing Hume Lane to the back of the study. What is the depth there? Uh, uh, madam, you're saying from this point to this point? Correct. Um, I, can, I can answer that for you. Scott, uh, you. I'm the architect and I've just got the CADs over my screen. Uh, so from the glass of apartment number four, way back to the storage cupboard at the back of the unit there in the study, it's 13.9 yes. uh, metres. Um, in the redesign, we did open up that space though, so it wasn't a closed off room. Um, we've opened that up so that it's joined with the dining and living room. And we've also amended the uh, the double height void space, which you can see on the screen now, which was a, a secondary method of getting light, uh, both uh, from, the, from the top floor down to that lower level. So you would agree that uh, it exceeds by approximately uh, five meters, the maximum depth distance uh, recommended by the ADG? Uh, yes, for, for bedrooms or for living rooms, it exceeds the eight metres. And that's one reason why we've positioned the kitchens as they are, so that all the kitchens are within eight metres of the living room windows. But for that one unit for home office or study, uh, we did decide to put that room at the back there with the light from above, uh, since it wasn't one of those critical rooms like a bedroom or living room. Nonetheless, it is a habitable space, is it not? 
uh, it's a habitable, habitable space, but it's also sort of an extension of the living dining space as well. It's, it's not hived off in its own separate room. And my last question is, um, I see that you rely on voids um, or what I would describe as tunnels for unit three and four uh, to get light and ventilation to bedroom number two of each of those units. Um, how wide and how long are those tunnels and how tall? Snorkels, I think they call them. That one's one. Then. E Sorry, uh, my apologies. You don't mean apartment three. There isn't one for apartment three. Is that, is that, sorry, would you? Um... So I, okay. So the apartment three is open to the air. Is that, it's open to the sky. Is that, is that side, what is that side channel there or? Uh, which one are you referring to? Um, right, um, right there, right there. What this is, one? No, no, no. The whole space along that it's edge. Bit, to oh, it's a set, it's a setback to the facade. So that part is open to the sky. Uh, to open to the sky and to the light. That part there is that part there is a facade with windows in it, with windows along there. That's the unit. The unit has been reduced in width, so the unit is from there to there, and the boundary is here. So this particular level has access to light, sky, and everything. I, I to the northern to northern light. And to the south, then that outlook is to what to a wall. Um. Well, sorry. Do they that's do that's a part of all, that that's the west to that way. Yes, that's to the rear lane and the that um that thirty meter tall building that across the other side of the lane that um, Mark referred to earlier. So this apartment has a northern facade along along there, and it has um, uh, light etc. and ventilation from its rear back from the back from the boundary to here. And that's Hume Lane, and then there's a building on the other side. Uh, perhaps, uh, Ken, if you could scroll down to DA21, it's just a little bit further down in the set. That's got a really good yeah. perspective view of the, the rear so, of the building. So what is, uh, which one? 21? 21. Okay. Uh, one more. Yeah, so this is views of the back of the building to demonstrate solar access. Uh, and you can see, say, the top left image, the, the bedrooms are on the top floor with the windows facing the north boundary. And that level there is the living room windows with the full height glazing facing the laneway. Uh, my, my question was also referring to the apartment uh, facing south, which is adjacent to number 114. Sorry, uh, 118 to 124. Yes. That one. That yeah. one. Yes, I can well, give you the dimension. Uh, it's actually written on the, the floor plan. It's a 1.1 metres off the boundary. But since we have a fire wall to fire separate, it's a, a 900 wide uh, 900 wide balcony beside the bedrooms. Okay, I have no more questions. Okay. Very well. Um, is there anything further that you wish to address the panel on? Uh, not on, uh, I presume I speak for the other guys as well, but not unless the panel um, has any more um, questions or, um, or or comments. Uh, no, I don't believe we do. So I would just like to thank you all and thank you for your patience in waiting for us as well. Uh, I'd like to thank you. And uh, our decision will be on Council's website by uh, Friday afternoon. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank, and thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, uh, and is this uh, it, just on a formality? Um, you, your decision is um, therefore the decision to either refuse or uh, or accept, or it then goes with the rec your recommendation to council for them to refuse or accept. Um, if we no, obviously want to deal with the application afterwards. No, no. This is an independent panel, and we've been charged charged with the determination of matters that the minister has directed that the panel. Uh, consider as opposed to the council. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.